But with the help of Rabbi Nishalaylam, if we can understand, if we can pick ourselves up and have a better insight to our tefillah, to the weeks of shayvavim, and in general to our kesher, to the Rabbi Nishalaylam, that would be our goal and our accomplishment for this evening. I want to talk about three things. There are three subjects wrapped in the sugi of shayvavim. The inyan of shayvavim, Kabbalah, the reading of the Torah on every Shabbos, the minig that we take out the Torah and read the Torah. It's the middle of davening and you take out the Torah. Some people see that as an opportunity to make Kiddush. But there's got to be another reason besides for just Kiddush. And we'll start with the idea, with the Indian that in Musaf Davening on a leap year we say Vichaparas Posha. So Mavarchim Achaydish this week. Mir Tashem will have Rishchaydish next week. And we're all familiar with the Tfilah. Elekeinu Lekev, Eseinu Chadesh, Eleinu Sachaydish, Azel, Toiva, Velevracha, Lesosin, Velesimcha, Lishu, and Lechama, Leparnosa, Vichalkala, Lechaim Toivim, Ulashalim. Mechilas chait v'slichas ovain, and stop. In brackets, it says, Bishnas ha'ibur ad reshchoidish oder beiz v'lechaparas pasha. Now, maybe some of you are like me, that have that feeling that they want to say kaparas pasha, even though it's not a shnas ha'ibur, and we're stuck of whether we should say it or not. But if we stick to the rules, it says you don't say kaparas pasha. Why not? Why not? Why is it only shnas ibor and only shnas ibor until till nissen? That's the first thing we'll discuss. We'll start with there, then we'll go to kriya satayra in general, and then we'll wrap it up and talk about shayvivim with the help of the rabbi Yisham and tie it all together. One of the things that I do in the base medrash at 6 o'clock in the morning is give daf yoimi. So it would be inappropriate to give a shear here this evening and not mention the daf. And lo and behold, the key to our whole discussion is a daf that we had about 10, 12 days ago. In the Gemara in Yuma, daf lamed vavam at beis, the Gemara says as follows. The Gemara is teaching us the nusach of the Kayin Godol on Yom Kippur. When he had to be Mechaper on Klal Yisrael, he said a tefillah. And the Gemara has a machlaikis between Reb Meir and the Chachamim as to the exact Nusach of the tefillah. Reb Meir had a Nusach of Avisi Pashati Vichatasi. Avisi I sinned b'mezid, pashati, I sinned as a marida, a revolution, v'chatosi, and I made a mistake, a shayig. And the Chachamim said, it's not possible. If you're already asking for such difficult sins, then chatosi comes afterwards, it goes the opposite, and therefore they switch the order. And they say, chatosi, those are the shaygagais, avisi, those are the things we did by on purpose. And Pshoyim Elu Hamordim. That's even a higher level. A person Khalilu who's Mirid Bemalchus. So if we look in our Rashhaidish Davening, a whole year, every year, we say Lamachilas Khait, Vilaslichas Ovain, and we don't say Kaparas Pasha. But Shnas ibur, we talk about and we ask for kaparas pasha. Pshia means merida. What are we referring to if on Rosh we're talking about pesha? If you go back to Bereshis, back to the beginning of the Torah, to Yom Revi, the Torah Kedusha tells us there were two Ma'ayres, Ma'ayr HaGadol L'Memshalas Be'yoyim. 
and the Ma'ar, which became Ma'ar Hakata and Lemeshalas Balaila. But it's not the way it started. It began Shnei Ma'iris. The Levana and the Chama were exactly the same size. Says Rashi, so why does it say later Ma'ar HaKatan? Because the Levana said to the Rabbi Nishloilam, Ein Shtei Melochim Mishtamshim Bekeser Echad. Two people, two Melochim, two kings, don't share one crown. Before the Levana said this, the Ar HaLevana and the Ar HaKam were exactly the same. If you'll ask me, how do I understand that? How is it that the Or Acham and Or Levana, how are they the same? The, was the moon also a luminary? Did it also give light the way the sun did? The Territ says, no. The moon never gave light. But the moon knew how to receive light. Just like a mirror. When you shine a mirror, you shine the sun, into a mirror. It reflects in such a way that you can't look at the mirror. Basically, you're seeing the sun through the mirror. The Levana, when it knew its role and it knew its job and it did what it was supposed to do, which is mikabel the sunlight the way it was supposed to, it was the mirror image of the sun. And it reflected all of the light of the sun. And that way, it was Ma'ar HaGadol. Shtehem hishtamshu bekeser echad. They both were partners in that glory. But then the moon revolted and was myrid b'malchus. And the moon said, two people or two kings can't be bekeser echad. That's called pesha. The Gemara says, being myrid, there's ovain, which is mazed, and then there is Pesha, which is Mairid. Well, the Levana was Mairid in her partner, the Chama. The idea, the Kesher between Zachar, Vinikeva, Chama, Levana, Mashpia, Mikabel, Hakadosh Baruchu, Klal Yisrael, Shamayim, Vaaretz is the side, one of the Sidus of the Bria. The idea that there is something or someone that gives, and there's something or someone that receives, begins from Bereshus Bar Lekim Es HaShamayim Ve'es HaOretz. It's the Yisoyed of the Bria. And the fact that the Levana said, Ein Shtei Melochem Mishtamshem Bekeser Echad, and HaKadosh Baruch Hu said, fine, you're right, Lechi Miet Es Atzmech, that created Choshech in the world. And Ad Kedai Kach, that it says when we bring one of the carb, one of the carbonus on Rosh Chodesh is a carbon chatos. It's brought down in Svarim. Kodesh Baruch Hu says, Kaviyochel, Hevi Alai Chatos. Because I had the Levona be Nismayit, and that created the possibility of Choshech, of darkness, which created the possibility of sin. This separation between Chama and Levona. The fact that the Levona doesn't shine the way the Chama does and doesn't have the light of the Chama is not only in the power and the light of the sun, but it's also in the time and the cycle and the, uh, the power and of the moon that is, but it's also in the time that the moon shines and its cycle. The Shla Kaddish explains that the sun has a cycle of 365 days. The Levana has a cycle of 29 days times 12, which is 354. There's always 11 days between the cycle of the sun and the cycle of the moon. The Tairak Daisha teaches us that because the Mayadim, the Yamim Taivim, have to fall out in their season, we can't let these two cycles fall apart or spread apart too much. We have to be misacking them. That's what Ibur means, aligning the two. Let's explain a little bit better. When the Levana and the Chama were mishtamish bekeser echad, when they were in one, when sync with each other, then the seasons of the Chama and the seasons of the Levana were naturally connected. 
Once HaKadosh Baruch Hu said, Lechi miyat es atzmech, that you're now going to be a smaller, less influential, a smaller cycle than the Chama, your whole period and the whole time that you'll have is no longer in sync with the Chama. They're drifting apart. For the Arabs, Lamashal, the Arabs have a holiday, it's called Ramadan. Every year, it moves 11 days in the calendar. They don't keep a lunar calendar, a solar calendar, only a lunar calendar. So for them, every year, their holiday moves 11 days earlier. This year, this last year, Pesach was in the middle of March. If we wouldn't have a leap year, Pesach this year would be in the beginning of March. And next year would be in February. And the next year would be in the beginning of it. And soon we'd be cleaning for Pesach already with the snow out. And the Torah Doisha says that no, this, it has to be during the spring. Every year when there's no leap year, the Chama and the Levona drift apart. On a leap year, when you have the 13th month, you now have the realignment of the Chama and the Levona. And as my good friend, Reb David Gurwitz, would say, Echod is Gematria 13. That 13th month is Me'ached, would connect the Chama and the Levona. That 13th year isn't just an extra month, but it's the 13th month. It's the month that's Me'ached and makes one out of these two cycles. So it isn't coincidental that there's a tikkun of these two cycles on the 13th month, Kim Gematria of Echad, that brings the two together, and you now have Kaporas Posha. If Pshia means Moirid B'Malchus, and the Levona said, Ein shtei molochem ishtamshem bekeser echad, and caused a miyut ha and caused itself to drift away from the cycle of the sun. The Levona now reestablishing itself as a month aligned with the Chama, that achtus means sishtaltzachavek. The Levona now becomes part and parcel of, co-connected to, to the Chama. That's called Kaparas Posha. We asked the Kasha, we began the first part of this shear with the question, why is it that in our tefillah of Chadesh Aleinu Sachoydesh Azel Letoiva V'Levrocha, we ask for Mechilas Chet V'Slichas Ovein, but normally we don't ask for Kaparas, kaparas Posha. And now, during a Shnas Ibra, we ask for Kaparas Posha only now. Manishtana, what changed? The Teretz is, in a regular year, when there is only 12 months, the Chama and the Levona drift apart. The Levana and the world doesn't have this madrego or this opportunity of kaporas posha. The pshia and the merida that the Levana caused and the choyshech is no taken to it on a regular year. But on a year of Ibur, a year where you have a 13th month, where the Levana accommodates and goes out of its way and adds a month of itself to its cycle and now is coincides with the Chama, now you have Kaparas Posha. During this Tkufa, from the beginning of Rosh Hashanah until it's rectified, until it's fixed up, which is up until Rosh Chodesh Nissen, we ask for that kapara to take place because we're in the process of fixing up this chait. That's the tkufa of the winter months during this zman, kaparas pasha. Now let's go on. That was point number one. We mentioned that these weeks Shoivavim, Shmois, Ve'era, Boy, Beshalach, Yisrael, Mishpatim. Those weeks are weeks of Tikkun. During the months, as Rav Mati is mentioning, on an Ibur Yar, Ibur, there's Tat, Truma Tetzave. But a regular year, not. 
Manishtana that this year has an extra truma titzava. Why is that part of the tikkun? Why isn't it normally? We'll get to that, Amir Tzashem. First, let's talk about Shaivavim. Let's talk about the tikkun of Shaivavim. In order to understand that, I want to talk and discuss a little bit the Yisoid of Kriya Satira, of taking out the Taira. It's so much part of our life, every Monday and Thursday, every Shabbos. Why in the middle of davening, in the middle of Shachris and the free, in the middle of Shachris, Sokman Kriya Satira, take out a Sefer Taira, in the middle of davening, I'm going to take out a Sefer Taira, a length of Taira. It's not just Talmud Taira. It's not just Limud HaTaira. Kriya Satira needs 10 people. Talmud Taira doesn't need 10 people. Limud Taira doesn't need 10 people. What is this? If you look in Halacha, in the Shulchan Aruch, in Hilchus, in Hilchus Sefer Taira, it says that if you have two people by the Taira, a person who's calling up, a person who's getting the Aliyah, and a person who's reading the Torah, it's not enough. You have to call another person so there should be three people standing next to the Sefer Torah. I know in some places there are minhogim that have four, but the way it says in the Shulchan Aruch and Allah, you have to have three people. <coughs> Explains the Mefarsha Shulchan Aruch, why do you need three people? Why isn't it, you have the person who got the Aliyah, and you have the person who's reading the Torah. You have two people. Zok Terazai. Just like at the time of Kabbalah, Satire, and Har Sinai, there were three different parties. There were Klal Yisrael, who received the Torah. There was Kav Yochel, the Rabbeinu Shalolam, who gave us the Torah. And you had Moshe Rabbeinu, who went in between Klal Yisrael and the Rabbeinu Shalolam, back and forth. And then HaKadosh Baruch Hu told Moshe Rabbeinu what to say. You have those three every time you take out the Torah to read, and especially on Shabbos. The person getting the Aliyah, the person getting the Aliyah, he represents Klal Yisrael. He, as the Lashon of the Shulchan Aruch, the Lashon of the, the Chafetz Chaim brings down a mission of Rura, he's the Shliach of Klal Yisrael. And by the way, I want to just mention the minig that when a person gets on Aliyah, he says Baruchu. What's he doing when he says Baruchu? Why does it, you have to say, you, you get an Aliyah, so say, Asher Baruch Abonu, make the Baruchu. Every person who gets Aliyah says Baruchu. Like I said when we started, we're learning here to try to understand what we're doing. Why is a person saying Baruchu? When do we say Baruchu? By Mayrev we say Baruchu. By Shachris, after Psuka de Zimra, as we're about to start, Yoytza Maris, we say Baruchu. And when people get aliyahs, they say baruchu. The words baruchu es Hashem amavarech, if I would translate it in English so that we understand, we're saying, we're calling out to our friends, everybody, baruchu, oh, my friends, my chaveirim, let us praise the Rabbi Nishalaylam. Let's, it's, and everybody says, baruch Hashem amavarech, they give praise. What are you doing? You're gathering together all your chaveirim, everybody around you, everybody in the tzibur, and you're making everyone one big tzibur. When you're about to daven Mayriv, we're about to be makabal kriyashma, we say baruchu. Shachris, we're about to go into birchas kriyashma, we're not saying shema and birchas kriyashma as individuals, we're one tzibur. What makes us a tzibur? Like Lahavdo, when they say, all those in favor say I. And everybody says I. Instead of just saying I, we say everybody, let's give praise to HaKadosh Baruch Hu. And everybody says, Baruch Hashem Baruch So we gather everyone together in blessing HaKadosh Baruch Hu. When you get an Aliyah, you're not standing there as an individual. You, the person who got the Aliyah, is Klal Yisrael. You represent all of the Yiddish people. Baruch Hu Hashem You gather all the people in the Tzibur, everybody together. Let us give blessing and praise to Hashem. They say Baruch Hashem Baruch They empower you with your Aliyah. And now you're the Mekabal HaTorah of Klal Yisrael. That's the person who gets the Aliyah. The person who reads 
is called in Shulchan Aruch Sarsur. That's Moshe Rabbeinu. HaKadosh Baruch Hu told Moshe Rabbeinu what to say. He taught the Torah to Klal Yisrael. He's the one who reads. Any Gaboyim here in the crowd? Oh, we have the Gaba Fendu. The Gaba state Vuzuk the Rabbi Yossel. The Gaba says in Halacha Kaviyachal is like the Rabbi Nishalaylam. It's a person who thinks he's God, right? That's the Gaba. <laughs> no joke. The Gaba represents Kaviyachal, the Rabbi Nishalaylam. He decides who's going to get it. If you look at it, it's a fascinating, I think every Gaba should look in the Mishnah Brura and see, he brings down from the Shara Ephraim what he writes about a Gaba. A Gaba has to be a Baal Maisim Toivim, has to be a person with Yerushamayim. The Tzibur has to accept him and be happy with him. And the Tzibur understands that he has no Negeus whatsoever. He's doing it because he is in his position as Gaba. He represents Kaviyachal, the Rabbi Nishalaylam. Ad Kedekach. So, gentlemen, Rabbi Isai, what is this teaching us? Zman Kriya Satayra, when they take the Torah out of the Aran Kaidish and they put it here on the Bima, is not just we're reading the Torah, we're learning Torah. No, it's much more than that. It's a reenactment of Har Sinai. It's Kabbalah Satayra. And just like the Gemara says in Shabbos, Hakol Moidim Shebe Shabbos Nitna Taira. Even though there's a machlaikis, what day of the month the Torah was given, but everybody admits that it was given on Shabbos. Every week we take out a Torah and we read the parsha. It's the Kabbalah's Hatayra of that parsha. Over an entire year of 52 weeks, depending on the leap year, if it's 50 or 54, over those entire weeks, Klai Yisrael is Mechabal, the entire Torah. Just like in the desert, when Maishu Rabbeinu gave the Torah to Klai Yisrael, he didn't teach them all of the halachas at one time. As Maishu Rabbeinu saw fit, Maishu Rabbeinu taught Klai Yisrael slowly, according to their capacity to receive. That's the way they're Mechabal Torah. Parsha after parsha after parsha. So too, us, Klal Yisrael, generation after generation, we are Mechable Atayra, and every week we get another Chelek Atayra. Our davening on Shachris on Shabbos, Yismach Moshe Bemat Naschelkoi, reflects. The Kabbalah Satara. It's a tefillah about Kabbalah Satara. But Omdu Lefonech Al Har Sinai Shnei Luchos Hayrid Biyodai. The tefillah that we say on Shachris describes Kabbalah Satara in the Sinai Saluchos to Klal Yisrael. And right after that, we say Vayibin Sora Aron, and we do the same thing. We take the Torah out and we read it. This is the Heliga, this is what goes on, this is what Kabbalah Satira is. It's not just reading the Torah, it's a Mechabla Hatira. Moshe Rabbeinu, Kaviyachod Rabbeinu Shalaylam, Rabbeinu Shalom first, Moshe Rabbeinu and Kalal Yisrael. That's what happens every single Shabbos, Nesina Satira of that parsha. Now that we understand that, let's move on. The weeks of Shmois, Ve'era, Boi, Beshalach, Yisrei, Mishpatim, these are the weeks of Yitzias Mitzrayim, the weeks that Klal Yisrael becomes a nation, and the weeks that HaKadosh Baruch Hu gets his partner. When Moshe Rabbeinu stood in front of the Rabbi Nishalom, he says, why are Klal Yisrael going out of Mitzrayim? What's chus? For what purpose? Kodesh Baruch Hu says, Tavdun es alekim bahar hazeh. I'm taking you out so that eventually you'll get here, to this mountain. You'll learn my Torah, my mitzvahs, and we will have a kesher like Chama v'levana, like Ish v'isha. Like Zachar v'nekeva, like Shamayim v'aretz, and the emesis is a Gemara. 
The Gemara at the end of Tainus, in the last Mishnah in Tainus, the Mishnah says, Biyoim, Biyoim Chasunosai, U Biyoim Simchas Liboy. Says the Mishnah, what does it mean the day of his wedding? Yoim Chasunosai, says the Mishnah, Zu Matan Taira. The Rabbeinu Shalom is like a chosin, hayyitzah mechupasai. And who's the, kla- the kala? Us, Klal Yisrael. The same way the chama and the levona have a relationship where the chama shines and the levona receives, the chama gives and the levona receives, the shamayim bestows and the earth grows, so too b'nei Yisrael and Kaviyach of the These weeks, Shmois, Ve'era, Boy, Beshalach, Yisroi, Mishpotim, are the weeks that Klal Yisrael becomes a nation and becomes the Bas Zug of the Rabbi Yisraelim. And there's Minhogim in Klal Yisrael that the times, these times, are designated for Limud. In Yone Bayis, in Yone Ish Isha, the Chazorah of the Halachas that of family purity. These are the weeks. Because these are the weeks in the Bria that these things are being misukin. The Zachar, the Nekeva, the Chamo, the Levono, the Kodesh Brochu with Klau Yisrael, Mashpi O Mekabel. These are those weeks. And we could say, Afilu Abyssal even a little bit deeper. Just like in Bereshus, HaKadosh Baruch Hu created the world. And the mission Perkei Ovis says, Ba'asor ma'moris nivro oilam. They were created in ten utterances. Ten times HaKadosh Baruch Hu said, nine times by Yoimer, and one time Bereshus. Bereshus says, the is nami maimer. HaKadosh Baruch Hu created the physical world during the, ten, during the, the six days of creation. During these six weeks of these parshas, HaKadosh Baruch Hu creates Kalal Yisrael. The Maharal writes that the ten makas, we discussed seven of them this week's parsha, correspond to the Aseris Hadibris Shenivra Oilam. Just like it says Bereshis, the first of the Maimarim, there's a maka called Makas Bechiris, your firstborn. And just like there's a maimer vayhi or, there's a maimer, there's a maka choyshech. V'chaheinu, v'chaheinu. The makos of Mitzrayim coincide to the mamorim of Bereshis because in a deeper sense, there's a bria, a creation happening in the beginning of Shemais. That's the creation of Klal Yisrael. It's their Bria. It's the Bria of B'nai Yisrael. HaKadosh Baruch Hu is, being, is bringing us out to this world Ba'aseres HaDibrais to the Aseres HaDibrais through Aseres HaMakais like the Asara Mamaris. Could be we know that there's a minig in Klal Yisrael to do Shnai and Mikra Ve'echa Targum. Where do we learn out that din of Shnai Mikavech Targum? Where does that halach go? So everybody knows, just last week, the Kinderlach brought home a piece of paper. And they have a Shnai Mikavech Targum campaign because Shmois is the words Shnai Mikavech Targum. Wouldn't it be appropriate that Bereshis should have the remez for Shnai Mikavech Targum? I mean, that's when you're supposed to start. You start at the beginning of the Torah. Why is it that Shemais is the remnant of Shnai Mikavech Targum? Could it be coincidental? It could be that the pshat of why specifically, what's the purpose of Shnai Mikavech Targum? We know that everything you learn, you learn four times. Until you don't do it four, my Rosh Hashiva, Zechariah Levach, whose who's, who's yard site was yesterday, Reb Gifter, he used to always say in Yiddish, he, would, uh, he was very pro Chazorah. So he used to say, Ain mol is kein mol. When you learn something one time, ain mol is kein mol. Tzvei mol is ain mol. Twice, now you did it once. Ain mol is kein mol. Tzvei mol is ain mol. He would always say, he would repeat that too. 
And then, of course, so Kalal Yisrael knows that to learn something, yet to really get it, you have to get it four times. Before Kalal Yisrael hears Kabbalah Satayro, you have to first have done Shnai Mikra Ve'echa Targum. If you do Shnai Mikra Ve'echa Targum, you have three. Then the Kabbalah Satayro is number four. Then you're ready to receive the Taira. You've done it four times. That Kabbalah, so listening then becomes the fourth time, and now you're a proper Mechabal. It's not a coincidence that the remez of this mitzvah of how to receive the Torah, of how to be Mechabal, the Torah begins in Sefer Shemais, when Klal Yisrael begins. Shnai Mikra Ve'echa Targum, even though it's Allah of Bereshis already, but what's negat to us, Kalal Yisrael, the Mechabalei HaTayra, the Ben Zug, or the Bas Zug of the Rabbi Yisrael, the Remez is in Shemois. Why? Because this is our beginning. This is our Haskhala. This is the time that we have to become the Ben Zug of the Rabbi Yisrael. Shnai Mikra Ve'echa Targum. That's the way to start Shemois. And in that way, a person is ready and able to be the Ben Zug, the Mechabal HaTayra of the Rabbi Yisrael. So we've explained the idea of Kaparas Pasha, the Cham and the Levana. We talked about the importance of Kriya Satayra and why it's not just a minig in Klal Yisrael, why it's not just listening to the Torah, but it's our opportunity on a weekly basis, on a weekly basis to be mischaber and to connect with HaKadosh Baruch Hu. And we've talked about the parashas of Shmois, Ve'era, Boi, B'Shalach, Yisrael, Mishpatim, as the parashas of the development of Klal Yisrael. And the idea of now is when we become that nation from the Rabbi Yisrael. This is the Hele Geteg. These are those days or those weeks, those six weeks, like the Bria, the creation of the world in six days. They're the six weeks of Klal Yisrael. So Rabbi Mati wants me to add, and what's with Tat? What's with Truma and Tetzava? Why are those two parshiyos added only during the leap year and not any other time? If it's a tikkun, it's a tikkun. If it's not, it's not. The Teretz is, and this is what I understood from my Rebbe, is Alzayin Gezunt. Why Bechlau is the, are the parshias of Truma Tetzava Vayaka Pakude? Why are they in par- Sefer Shemois? Sefer Shemois is known as Exodus. It's the time of Klal Yisrael becoming free. Were in Klal Yisrael free when they left Mitzrayim? The Mekam of the Torah. So Shemois should finish with Parshas Mishpatim. Why are Truma Tetzava there? So the Ramban in the beginning of Sefer Shemois in Ezak Thomas says that even though Klal Yisrael left Mitzrayim and went into the desert, they were still considered in Golis. Only when HaKadosh Baruch Hu told Moshe Rabbeinu to build a Mishkan, and there was Hashra Sashchina, they now got to the Madrega of Mailas Avoisam. They now got to the Madrega of Avram Yitzchak V'Yakov, the Madrega of the Avois and the Imois, that the Shechina was Shere Beinayim. As the Chazal say, Hain Hain Hamer Kava. They're the chariot where Klal Yisrael went, HaKadosh Baruch Hu went with them. That's called Tikkun HaBayis. There's a bias for HaKadosh Baruch Hu. Ein ze kiim beis elekim, v'ze shara shamayim. Amar Rabbi Yochanan, Ma'olam le'karasi le'ishti ishti, elekarasi le'ishti beisi. The Tikkun of the Nekeva, of the woman, of the Mechabal, is called bias. In a regular year where the sun and the moon separate and go in two different directions and run on two different cycles, there's no Tikkun HaBayis. The Nekeva and the Zohar are going in two different directions. There's no, there's no synchronization between the two. Azoivi, we spoke until now. We talked about the idea that a Shnas HaIbur is a Shnas HaEchod. It's the 13th year where everything comes together. It's Achdos. 13th is Gematria, Echod. It's a year where the Levana is now in sync with the Chama. It's Kaparas Posha. 
that's a year when there is a tikkun habayis in Klal Yisrael, in the Bria. That's a year when there's a special hashra sashchina. The tikkun is chal, not just on Klal Yisrael, but on the base elekim v'zeh shara shamayim. Truma tetzava that talks about the building of the mishkan, v'shachanti b'soycham, can only do that on a year where there's a tikkun of mashpia mekabel, zochar v'nekeva, hakadosh baruch hu v'klal yisrael. That year, ain'za base elekim v'zeh shara shamayim. There's a bias, the tikkun of the bias is also a chalik of that tikkun. Kaddish Baruch Hu should help us. As we understand now, there's so much energy, so much koiches, so much tahara that are in these parshiyos. If a person is ready for Kabbalah Satayra on a weekly basis, if a person has done Shnai Mikovecha Targum, and when it comes time to take out the Torah, he's already Davin Shachris. Sometimes right, we still have to play catch up, right? I'm not, okay, Miret Neshvegin then. Right, he's already ready to hear. And Kiddush is not on his mind. If you're holding by such a Madrega, then you can focus on the koiches that come from Kriya Satayra. That gives koiches for not just a person's day for Shabbos, not just for a person's week. That's koiches for the whole year. That's part and parcel of a big Kabbalah satire that happens on a yearly basis. That's each week is a chilek of that big Kabbalah satire. That's what we're zeichet to. I'm going to finish off. You ask, you'll ask me a kasha. So if we're now living through Yitzhiyas Mitzrayim, so why aren't we eating matzah? And what do we have to celebrate Shavuos in the summertime if in two weeks we know soon it's going to be Shabbos Shira because Klai so went through the Yam. And then there's going to be Shabbos Kabbalah Satayra. So what's with Pesach and Shavuos then? If we have it in our reading of the Torah, so eat matz and celebrate it now, not then. Im yovaya ben v'yisha. It's a good tekasha. And I think that the Teretz is Pashat. I will give a marshal. A person goes to school to learn something. A person goes to yeshiva to learn to be a rebbe. A person lahavdo goes to school to learn to be an accountant or to be a doctor. Spends many years. Soaks up all this energy, learns, gets the knowledge, knows what to do, but now it's time to put it into practice. From all that he's learned, but he has to do something. Now it's time to work. Now it's time to do what you've learned. Use it. It's called Torah and mitzvahs. Torah is the learning, mitzvahs is the meisim. The zman to be mekayim, the mitzvahs of the Torah, they have their seasons. Pesach, Yetzirah, Mitzrayim is in the summertime. Shavuos, the zman of Kabbalah Satayra. That's the mitzvah part. But the learning part, the Torah part, that's when we read the parshiyas. Taira u mitzvah is chukim and mishpatim. There's the chelak ha taira and then there's the chelak ha mitzvah. There's the learning, the soaking up the ideas, the knowledge, the kedusha v'tahara, and then use it. That's the difference between the reading of the taira throughout the weeks of the parsha and then taking the maisa mitzvahs and doing them when the appropriate time comes during the Yom Tif of Pesach, or Shavuos, or Sukkot. We should all be Zaycha, as it is Mevarchem HaChodesh, and as we are Mevarchem HaChodesh of Ashnasa Ibor. We have a special opportunity of Kaparas Pasha. It's not just the Pesha of the Levona, it's also of Klal Yisro. Sheheim Asidim Lehischadesh Kemoisa. Just like the Levana will once again become our Halavana Ka'ar Achama, so too HaKadosh Baruch Hu will give us, His Ben Zug, Kalal Yisrael, the opportunity to shine and see Vero Kol Ame Ha'aretz, Ki Sheim Hashem Nikra Alecha. They'll see the same glow and shine the way the Levana will mirror the image of the sun, so too Kalal Yisrael will mirror our Ben Zug, the Rebbein Shalom. Thank <laughs> you.